The House of Representatives of the Philippines is the lower house of the Congress of the Philippines. It is more popularly called Congress. With its current partilist system of election, the Congress has made it possible for marginalized or underrepresented sectors to choose their advocate. Aangatayo is one such partilist championing causes in Congress. Welcome to Dynamic Living the Total You. We are actually here in the office of one of the youngest lawmakers in the country. He is actually the representative of Partilist Aangatayo. I am very much honored to have with me here Honorable Abayon Harlin Neal III. He is going to discuss with us you know, our episode on championing causes in Congress. Welcome to Dynamic Living the Total You, Honorable Congressman, sir. Thank you very much, Doctora, for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be part of Dynamic Living the Total You. Yes, Po, and we are also very much honored because we know also that you being representative of one of the party lists in the country, you have programs that are in line also with the welfare of the Filipino people. Pero heto po ang napansin natin sa inyong mga programa, sa inyong party list, um, napansin po natin na you are more inclined towards representing the sectors on about the, you know, or the elderly, bakit ganun po? Actually po, we did not uh, specifically target a specific sector. What we did, we are a multi-sectoral party list. We represent the youth, elderly, uh, women, urban poor, and OFWs. Kasi yung approach po kasi namin, kasi we get asked a lot, why, why, why did you choose a multi-sectoral approach? Kasi from how I see it, in reality po kasi, there are so many problems in society eh. So if you choose to represent a certain sector, tapos someone comes to you to ask for help, you cannot just simply say no to them, diba? Just because they are not part of the sector that you represent. So what we did, we went with a multi-sectoral approach, tapos gino ginawa po namin goal-oriented, mm -hmm. hence po yung name, Aangat Tayo Party List. So our main objective po is we try to find ways that will that we believe will uplift the lives of the Filipino people. Mm -hmm. Yung sinabi natin na aangat tayo, you know, that's a Filipino word coined for uplifting mm -hmm. the plight of our countrymen, hindi yes. po ba? <coughs> so, heto po, Congressman, eh, sinabi niyo multisectoral. Mm -hmm. Pag sinabi natin multisectoral, binanggit na ninyo, kasami din po dito ang mga underprivileged na mga kabataan who are out of school. Yes, but mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, let's go into specific programs that you have, like for example, the environment, po. Because hindi naman natin po pwedeng ibahin, no? And we know for a fact also that climate change is really there, mm -hmm. and we really have to contend with it. Yes. So, pag sinabi natin sa environment, ano po ang inyong program ng nakaabang para dito? So, yung basic programs po namin for environment is we just go back to basics, because. We don't really have to complicate things eh, in reality. Like for example, yung isa pa program is clean up drives mm -hmm. and we also do tree planting programs. Those are our priority programs for environmental concerns. Pag sinabi ninyo na you are just trying to go back to the basics, which is actually what we need eh. Yes, hindi po. naman natin kailangan yung masyadong complex mm -hmm. at mga bagay na hindi natin kayang gampanan. Ano po ba? How successful are we when it comes to tree planting at saka yung sinasabi ninyong clean up drive? Uh, so far po, with with the um, communities that we partnered with, eh, naka, the, the, the reason why we go back to basics po, kasi in reality, whether we like it or not, kasi national po yung hawak naming scope, we cannot always be there mm -hmm. with them to initiate these uh, movements. So what we do, we try to motivate and encourage yung mga people within the community mm -hmm. na talagang after we leave, tutuloy-tuloy nila yung programa. Mm -hmm. So, so far, parang okay naman po sa communities that we partnered with, especially in our province in Northern Samar. Mm -hmm. Ibig po sabihin noon, Congressman, eh, you're just trying to empower the people. Yes po. Uh, Kasi whether we like it or not, there's only one of me as the representative. Mm -hmm. And yung officers po namin, ilan lang din naman po kami. Eh, yung so, nag-support po sa amin, who were accounted for, are, amounts to 243,266 mm -hmm. individuals. Yung votes po namin. But I believe yung iba pa po doon na nag-support through prayers or in whatever form, siguro abot po yung 300 to 400,000 people. And whether we like it or not, reality, kulang po talaga kami sa manpower. Eh. Mm -hmm. So we empower them para they will follow through with mm -hmm. our programs when Kaya we Pagdating leave. naman po sa livelihood programs, ano po ang thrust ng inyong party list? So yung sa livelihood po kasi we partner with DOLE, Department mm -hmm. of Labor and Employment, and TESDA. And what we do kasi po, per community different po yung need kasi not mm -hmm. not the same 
So kung sino po yung mga officers namin na, I mean yung leaders namin in specific areas that they request for certain programs, that's what we request from Dolly and Testa. No specific po na type of livelihood. Kung ano mm -hmm. po yung i-request sa amin, yun yung wini-work out namin. Or kaya naman, eh, depende sa pangangailangan yes, yun at kakayahan talaga. ng isang lugar. Kasi different po. Uh -huh. per, per region, per area po talaga yung need. Okay. Now, what about health po? Kasi eh, palagi yan sinasabi natin. Hindi po pwede na ang agenda ng isang grupo or ng isang um, lawmaker eh, will do without health. Eh. Mm -hmm. Basic need po kasi talaga yes, natin ang I health. Yes, I absolutely agree. So, sa inyo pong um, grupo ninyo, ano po ang inyong thrust naman pagdating sa health? So, sa health po, we have medical assistance programs. We, mm -hmm. we partnered with different government hospitals mm -hmm. para po kung may patients tayo, may, ano tayo, may members who needs help, we refer them to different government hospitals para po mabawasan yung medical expenses nila. Mm -hmm. So they just come and see you or kung saan yung may office kayo, they can go there and they seek can, help? They don't have to come personally kahit po through mm -hmm. text, through Facebook. Actually, yung karamihan po nang lumalapit sa akin ngayon kasi modern na po tayo. Ang dami mm -hmm. po nagmamessage sa akin sa Facebook. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they can easily approach me, especially in my personal accounts. I manage that personally. Mm -hmm. So lahat po na humingi ng tulong, I refer it to my staff here in office na naka-assign talaga for it. I have one specific staff here assigned for medical assistance. Though no need to personally come, you can contact us through any means you can. Through Pero hindi po ba kaya yan eh, magiging subject to abuse din po? Lalo pagdating sa medical assistance? Uh, not necessarily po eh. Kasi yung government, it is limited to government mm -hmm. hospitals. So may kita po natin kung may record talaga sila doon. Mm -hmm. If they do not have a record there, the government hospital will not also release the budget for them. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, pagdating po naman natin sa pag sinasabi natin, heto pong cheap medicine bill eh. Nandoon mm -hmm. naman na talaga yan. It has always been there. Eh. Do you believe congressman na ang mga gamot dapat talaga ay masyadong mababa upang you know, it can serve a lot more people? Do I believe na mababa yes. dapat? Na dapat mababa talaga well, ang actually, pricing ng Well, actually, if you ating, ask me po ah. Yeah, for when you, it comes to health opinion, services, I okay. want health services to be as affordable and talagang madali makuha ng mga ano ba, ng people. Mm -hmm. Kasi without our health, we are basically dead. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything eh. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental for me, health talaga. So parang for me, dapat hindi po actually nenegosyo yung health as mm -hmm. much as possible eh. Kasi may iba dyan, yun na lang yung puhunan nila. They don't have education, but they have their health. Mm -hmm. if, they ha if they're healthy, at least they have they still have the means to Work. succeed in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Opo, talaga mahalaga po ang ating health eh. Heto po Congressman eh bata po po kayo and yet you are already here in Congress. Yes. Masasabi niyo po ba na nung kayo ay you know in your younger years na hindi ngayon. No, did you ever foresee yourself? Did you envision yourself na okay one day I'm going to be in Congress because I'd like to be part of the lawmaking body? Okay, so uh, before I'll answer, I'll just share a Bible verse po. Ah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. So with that question, I would admit it was never my ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, my father po, he was a former governor. So the same the year po he won as governor, 1988. Same year I was born mm -hmm. in this world, 1988. So from the very time I stepped foot on this planet, I have been exposed to the world of politics. Mm -hmm. So nakita ko po kung ano yung trabaho, yung tipong wala na kayong problem, tapos may tatawag sa inyo to ask for help, mm -hmm. tutulog na si Papa, may tatawag pa si Sir, namatay po si ganyan, mm -hmm. na aksidente si ganyan. So for me, parang I did not like it growing up kasi hindi mo na nga kaya ma-handle sarili mo. Ang dami pang tinatapon sa yung problem to solve. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I took up nursing mm -hmm. in college, and the reason for that, because when you are when you are a nurse, madali po magkaroon ng ano eh, uh, sustainable work abroad, mm -hmm. especially. Ako naman po, uh, due to God's blessing, I don't have I already had a visa since I was a baby, mm -hmm. so madali lang po mag abroad. But that was my personal plan, po mm -hmm. a personal desire to take up nursing, to go abroad, to live a simple life. But then instead, when I took up yung third year po namin may community course. Mm -hmm. We had a community subject ng third year nursing. That was the first time I experienced uh, yung poverty po talaga in our country, yung poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. So we had a community service under Bendia Bridge. Then yung isa pong na-assign sa akin ng patient, I forgot her name, pero she was old, si Nanay. 
Yung blood pressure po niya the whole time when I was there, laging 200 over 120, mm-hmm. 180 over 100. So she was high blood the whole time I was taking care of her. Tapos every time I asked her, Nay, hindi ba masakit ulo niyo? Tapos she had the most genuine smile. Mm-hmm. Tapos that's the first time I, I realized what public service was about. It's not about you, what you want, but yung people that you are able to help. Ba? So what, what, what bridged that, you know, being in the medical field and out of the blue, you went into politics? Yun nga po eh, kasi medical field, dapat simple life abroad. But instead, parang it opened something in my heart. Mm-hmm. Eh, I started reflecting na parang I had the opportunity to serve. Why do I keep avoiding it? Mm-hmm. So that's when later, mahaba pa po story, during my law school, I went to law school also and had the same enlightenment. So I, I eventually just parang concluded na maybe if this is God's plan for me to be in public service, so might as well embrace it na lang kasi mm-hmm. no matter how I tried to avoid the path, parang everything I took, parang lagi pong rinidire- mm-hmm. redirect dun eh. Mm-hmm. So syempre, if you want to excel at something, you have to embrace your destiny, di ba? Mm-hmm. You have to put your 100% effort. So what I did when I started praying, so reflecting, tapos I was chosen to be nominee, so I said, well, if this is your plan for you, sige, I will accept it. Mm-hmm. Kasi, yun nga, because he knows what's his plans for us to, not to harm us, but to prosper us. You know, from, from your story, that story alone, Congressman, eh, it's something that is reflective of how the young people should be when they try to, you know, plan their lives. Eh, yes. Dipo ba? So, sinabi niyo nga, eh, service, dapat, eh, kahit na anong field ka naman pupunta, you can always serve. So, at matanong ko po kayo, which part in legislation or which part in your work now here in Congress, you know, that really invokes that feeling of satisfaction in you? Service? Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, yung mga ano lang po eh, when I get, when people tell me na thank you sir for your presence, yung ano lang ba? When they parang appreciate what you do in their own simple ways, that is more than enough for me. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily yung Kaya nga po, when I visit mga events, binibigyan ako ng gifts, mga certificate of appreciations, I tell them, actually, I do not need that anymore because that's mm-hmm. part of the job. Mm-hmm. You simply asking, inviting me to share my knowledge and wisdom, that's parang the one of the best feelings for me, to be able to share what God has given me. Mm-hmm. Now, looking forward naman, eh, ano po kaya sa pakipalagay ni Honorable Congressman Abayon, eh, ano po ang inyong nakikita sa inyong sarili, say, 10 years or 15 years or 20 years from today? Kasi ngayon, you are full of passion about service, about what you can do to uplift the plight of our mm-hmm. mga kababayan. Eh. 10, 15, 20 years from today, how do you envision yourself? Envision myself. For me, public service, not necessarily in political posts or government mm-hmm. posts. I think public service will not dis- ano na, be gone from my lifestyle na siguro since I've gotten used to it. And when you start doing it, parang mahirap na rin tanggihan when mm-hmm. someone asks help from you. Eh. So I think I will be helping in any way I can mm-hmm. in the next, siguro throughout my lifetime. But not specifically plan for like higher posts or what. I do not really envision myself regarding that mm-hmm. kasi Ako, I believe it, boy, everything happens because it's God's will. Mm-hmm. So whatever His purpose is for me, I will just enjoy the journey. Po. Pero mm-hmm. public service will always be there mm-hmm. for So me. your vision po for, for the country that we have? Mm-hmm. So my vision for the country, ano po actually, eh, I have a lot of plans for the country, pero there's so much problems po in our country, one step at a time. So isa po kasi sa advocacy namin sa party list is we are the only party list that does this, yung advocacy po namin on religious freedom. Mm-hmm. And I believe we are, the, I'm only, siguro, out of all my colleagues who prioritize this measure. Mm-hmm. Some people do not take this seriously, but whether we like it or not, if you look at the trends po ngayon sa modern times, like yung ISIS, that's due to religious wars. Mm-hmm. That's due to religious freedom issues. So what I want sana, what my vision now is, the people, the Filipino people, to be aware of what religious freedom is about and in the Constitution as a right of every individual citizen of the Philippines. Which we will discuss on the second half of my interview with you, Congressman. Oh, we'll take a very okay. short break and when we return po, we will continue on with our discussion, this time focusing on religious liberty. Please stay tuned to Hope Chat. Maraglapad ba na akong ulo? Inom sa kwan niya tableta para mawala ni. 
Encyclopedia. Sa Natural Remedies Encyclopedia, siguradong mas safe and healthy ka. Partilist representatives are indirectly elected via a partilist election, wherein the voter votes for the party and not for the party's nominees. The votes are then arranged in descending order, with the parties that won at least 2% of the national vote given one seat, with additional seats determined by a formula dependent on the number of votes garnered by the party. No party wins more than three seats. If the number of sectoral representatives does not reach 20% of the total number of representatives in the House, Parties that haven't won seats but garnered enough votes to place them among the top sectoral parties are given a seat each until the 57 seats are filled. A voter, therefore, has two parallel votes in the House of Representatives elections for district representative and for the underrepresented sectoral partilist representatives. Partilist representation makes use of the tendency for proportional representation systems to favor single-issue parties and applies that tendency to allow underrepresented sectors to represent themselves in the lawmaking process. Welcome back to Dynamic Living the Total You, dear viewers and listeners over the radio. We have our episode here, right here at the office of Aangat Tayo. You know, this is a party list that is being headed by no less than Honorable Abayan Harlin Anil III. And we are in his office. We are trying to discuss championing causes in Congress. So, kanina po, napag-usapan natin, no? we got briefly a view on who you are, on what you believe in, and on the projects and programs of Aangat Tayo Party List. Ngayon naman po, eh, bago natin sundan yung kaninang sabi natin na on religious liberty, eh, napansin po namin na sa inyong uh, presentations, eh, you are actually championing also or crusading for human rights. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Ano po bang meron doon sa human rights na yun na gustong gusto ninyo at masyadong malapit sa inyong puso? Mm -hmm. So, kung napansin nyo po kanina, di ba, parang lagi pong approach yung back to basics kasi we don't have to complicate things actually. Mm -hmm. And for me, human rights is parang the purest form of going back to basic kasi that is the right of a human being. Mm -hmm. So, that's the essence of how to be a human being, what you can do as a human being, our right to property, right to life, our right to religious freedom is part of it. Eh, yung, yung point ko lang po kasi dun, uh, ako kasi growing up, I didn't know my rights. I only learned about it when I was in law school. So, uh, I learned Pero ini-enjoy natin. I mean, uh, yes, you, did not, you, di you did not know it uh, technically in terms of maybe the law, mm -hmm. pero yung araw-araw na pamumuhay ng isang mamamayan, that is actually a way of exercising his or her right. Yes, but the problem po kasi, there are those na parang who knows the rights of individuals and mm -hmm. they abuse other people when it mm -hmm. comes to their work, their yun, religious discrimination. Mm -hmm. There are lots of issues regarding human rights. So I just want parang each citizen uh, to be fully aware talaga of what they what rights they have as a human being. All right. Now, kasama dun sa human rights na yan, or the rights of a person, is sinabi natin the right to live, the right to practice, mm -hmm. the right to, to do a lot of things. No? Pero heto po, kasama din po kasi dito ang ating right 
to be able to exercise ano yung ating paniniwala or beliefs. Yes, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. right? That's what you call the right to religious freedom. Mm -hmm. At nabanggit niyo po kanina, Congressman, before we took the short break, mm -hmm. na hetong problem ngayon with the, with the ISIS, you know, not just here in the Philippines, but worldwide, yes. it has something to do also with their religion. Yes, mm -hmm. kasi yung story po kasi ng usual story of mga uh, yung mga radical Islams, they, may yung, pagtingnan po natin yung background nila, there are times na parang they were persecuted yung belief nila. Tapos, because of that, it turned parang it changed their vision regarding religion. So, that's why they went to that side, yung extremist form of Islam, mm -hmm. yung sa iba pong terrorist groups when I read the history. Okay. Pag sinabi po natin freedom to religion, eh, yes. heto po ba ay it will embrace all kinds of beliefs that a person may have? So, the general rule po is uh, no law, according to the Constitution po muna. Yes. So, Article 3, Section 5 of the Constitution, no law shall be made respecting an establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The next sentence, the free exercise of religious profession uh, without discrimination shall forever be allowed and no religious test shall be applied in the exercise of civil or political rights. Mm -hmm. So in the first sentence put on, it says there yung no law shall be made respecting an establishment. That means the government cannot favor one religion, mm -hmm. cannot enact a law so favoring that, that, only one words, religion. In other words, Congressman, uh, it's clear cut na the government or the state should not favor any. Yes, uh -huh. dapat independent, neutral mm -hmm. yung government at all times. The next po, yung next sentence put on religious profession and worship without discrimination and preference, it means that your belief cannot be limited by the government or the state. Hindi ka pwedeng pagbawalan sa belief mo. Mm -hmm. But that is the general rule. The exception there is, if your belief is already leaning towards medyo yung extreme side na, mm -hmm. when it tends to affect public danger, public safety, national security, or nakakasakit ka na ng kapwa, mm -hmm. that is when the government can step in. Mm -hmm. Yan po natin makikita, Congressman, uh, na minsan nakakalimutan ng mga kapwa natin na yung ating right will also, you know, will have to be something na when we exercise it, Eh, kumbaga, we also respect the other party. Yes, uh -huh. yun po talaga dapat. Mm. Yes. So, pag sinabi po natin na definition of religious freedom in a particular state, like in the Philippines, eh, mm -hmm. ang ibig po sabihin, yung sinabi niyo po kanina na batas, eh, hindi na po natin kailangan dagdagan pa yung batas na yan kasi it's a very basic tenet of the law. Yes. Yung main objective lang po kasi talaga ng religious freedom is separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. No, the, the state will not interfere with church matters and vice versa. And the reason for that po kasi, imagine po if there is a church, state, religion na talagang fully supported by a church. The scary scenario po there is lahat po ng basis ng isang ng state will be based on the church. Mm -hmm. So yung state po will not parang functioning on its own, ano na ba, own perceptions. And yung other beliefs po that goes against that religion will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. That is the reason why separation of church and state po, to avoid religious persecution. Mm -hmm. Pero ang government po ba, eh, dapat ba may preferential treatment siya? So sabihin natin, there's separation of church and state. And yet, is it possible that the state will have a preferential you know, treatment over mm -hmm. one type of belief than the others? Should there be? Yeah, should there be? Wala if talaga, me, yes. If you ask me po, I, I, I think dapat neutral po talaga yung state. Mm -hmm. Kasi like I said, what's going to happen, kung yun po yung mangyayari, may preferential treatment, it's going to lead to religious persecutions mm -hmm. of other groups that goes against this certain religion. So for example, uh, Congressman, eh, ito pong ating mga paaralan. Mm -hmm. We have, are able to separate them from private and the government-owned or pub, uh, go, public schools, mm -hmm. no? Ito po ba, eh, minsan naririnig natin yan, hindi problem if it's a pub, private school kasi they have the right, you know, to be able to teach kung ano yung teaching yes. nila kasi sila yung may-ari, no? Yes. Pero yung mga public schools po ba, dapat po ba sila ay magkaroon din ng subject na tinatawag nating religion? Uh, as far as I know po, I, I forgot the specific law. But there is a law that states that when it comes to public schools, they cannot teach religion without the consent of the parents. Mm -hmm. So the only time they can teach is if the parents consent. Again, because that involves yung separation of church and state mm -hmm. principle po eh. 
public schools involves government funds, mm -hmm. and government funds cannot be used for religious, uh, religious matters. Mm -hmm. So, hindi dapat mag magamit ng fund teaching only a specific religion kasi that's going to violate yung non-establishment clause po, yung separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. Heto po, um, Congressman, eh, why is there such a big issue na kung, kung, baga, eh, kung meron tayo clear-cut naman ang batas natin mm -hmm. on religious liberty, separation of church and state, how come there's a big issue when a public school, sinabi nyo nga, bawal dapat yan eh, mm -hmm. but supposing ako ngayon, I belong to a different uh, belief or a different religion eh, Sinabi ng batas natin na I am to honor the Philippine flag. I am to sing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. But my beliefs, you know, say otherwise. And, uh, you know, it does not encourage me to do it. Should I follow the state law or should I, you know, follow the beliefs that I have been brought up with? Mm -hmm. Actually, with that issue po, ano na eh, that, that's already been decided by the Supreme Court mm -hmm. uh, involving the Jehovah's Witnesses Church. So that involves the cases of Ebrelinag and Herona. So yung first case po dyan, yung Ebrelinag, yung po yung 1959 case, the Supreme Court before decided against the members of Jehovah's Witnesses kasi for them, the flag daw is not an image or a, or a god, but a mere symbol of the Republic. Pero for me, that is not for them sana to decide upon kasi religious matters dapat yun eh. So that should be left to the discretion of their of the respective church. Mm -hmm. Yun po yung dating case. Buti na lang po nung 1993, heroin na case na, na overturn po yung decision ng Supreme Court. Sinabi na, kinlarify na doon ng Supreme Court that the only time you can uh, limit the religious freedom of an individual is if yun nga po, it affects public safety or danger, mm -hmm. it affects national security, or you harm other individuals. E pag nagpa-flag flag ceremony naman po, or naglupang hinirang, you do not affect the public safety, di ba? Kasi they just stand at attention. They just don't put their hand in their mm -hmm. chest or they just do not go like this. Mm -hmm. So, hindi po yun nakapekto ng public danger. So, they are already excused actually mm -hmm. po. Yung what ganyan. about, meron po tayong mga kasamahan sa Seventh-day Adventist Church wherein yes. their belief actually is also no work on a Sabbath day because they believe in the Sabbath mm -hmm. and actually they don't even take examinations on this day. So, in relation po sa Seventh-day Adventist Church, same principles din po. Kasi if we do not go, if they do not attend classes or work on a Saturday or do not take exams, it does not affect public danger or safety, does not affect national security, it does not affect, it does not cause harm to your fellow man. In other words, there is no danger that the state, that the state has a right to protect against. Mm -hmm. The only time po siguro pag maging pag talagang makikita ang maapektuhan yung national security. Pero pag, if hindi naman, or what, mm -hmm. they cannot also af limit the rights of a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. It, in the same manner po, there are also, we also have brothers and sisters who do not believe that they should be transfused with blood yes, when po. they get sick. So, mm -hmm. the state should also respect that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kasi, ano po eh, that's his personal conviction, personal right. And actually, the religious freedom po, as of this moment, it's talagang protected by our constitution. And there was one case wherein one justice said that religious freedom is given ha, uh, parang higher importance po talaga. Kasi there are individuals who have nothing in this world, yet they have their religion. And it makes them feel that they are the richest man in the world. So it is parang, it's a feel-good right po ba? Mm -hmm. It makes people do good. So it's really guaranteed by our constitution. Mm -hmm. Which actually we should, you know, embrace with with so much thanksgiving in our hearts, knowing that everybody is free to be able to exercise their beliefs. Yes. Pero papapansin din po natin na uh, congressman, eh, meron sa mga kalye, minsan, lalo na mga busy streets, mga, mm -hmm. yung mga palengke dyan, meron din po namang mga religious uh, groups na, you know, they try to, you know, broadcast their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And ano, napapansin po natin yan, eh, when, you, when you go to the marketplaces, yes, well. there are people who are like that. And we salute them actually for being so aggressively, you know, uh, passionately trying to relate to the people kung ano yung kanilang paniniwala. Wala naman pong pinagbabawal pagdating dyan. So, yun nga po, let's go back dun sa when it, if it affects public safety. Mm -hmm. Kasi sometimes, there are those who do that na maganda po yung layunin. Like, mm -hmm. di ba may iba po ginagawa. Instead of yung sigarilyo, binibigyan nila ng candy. Mm -hmm. Tapos they give them flyers together with the candy of their church. 
Pero may iba rin po kasi nang iinsulto eh. Mm-hmm. Like example parang yung radical ano na ba, extremist na mm-hmm. sty- style of approach. Pag naka-insulto na po, yan pwede ma-regulate ng government. Mm-hmm. Pero if it's if it if it if they're still doing good in accordance with their religious beliefs, there's no prohibition against it. In other it. words, in other words, provided <coughs> that they don't actually, you know, um, create a discord yes. between other believers, then that is fine by mm-hmm. it. But when is there an instance wherein the state will have to take over, you know, and uh, insist on on you know doing things their way instead of allowing a religious group to just do what they want? This moment? Yes, at this moment. Like, for example, a concrete example would be we being a Catholic country, we mm-hmm. know that 90% uh, actually of the Filipinos are Catholics, and uh, we also have this reproductive health bill, right? And mm-hmm. that's a law also that the government has in order to curb the population, the growing population. And uh, we also believe that there are certain uh, religions that are against, you know, Mm -hmm. controlling, uh, you know, the number of babies or children that a certain family can have. So do you think, Congressman, that the law will have to be able to balance it out in such a manner that, okay, I want this to be implemented, and yet it's contrary to this particular group of believers? So from how I see it po, kasi yung sa RH law, yung main opposi- opposition po is yung Catholic Church. But that's their belief. There are also religions so do not oppose it. Eh. So they cannot impose their faith on others kasi neut- neutral po dapat tayo. Eh. So for me po talaga, I, 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 in my opinion po talaga, dapat there is always neutrality within the state. Kasi if we just follow the dictates of a certain religion, again, it's going to lead to religious persecution. Tapos, Pag mag-carry over pa yan, that's when the start yung mga terrorist groups nagpa-pop out mm-hmm. kasi na-insulto na. So in short, we, sh- we should avoid that because it might create religious wars. That's mm-hmm. the main purpose of yung separation of church and state. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think our country should be able to reflect on that no? para palagi nating sinusunod yan. Um, what about Teto naman? I, I'd like to ask you, uh, Congressman, do you believe na or do you think na we need more laws on religious freedom? on protecting the beliefs of uh, people or mm-hmm. tamang tama na kung anong meron tayo mga legislative laws yun? So, as of this moment po kasi, guaranteed na constitution yung religious mm-hmm. freedom. So, all laws, mm-hmm. being the constitution being the supreme law of the land, lahat po ng batas, ordinances, decrees, etc. must all conform to the constitution. So, in my opinion, theoretically po ah, theoretically, dapat hindi na. Kasi may constitution po tayo which guarantees it eh. But the problem po kasi, real world application, human nature comes in. That's when yung mga religious persecution comes up na. Tapos yung certain individuals, they do not know the constitution. That's why ako po, since one of our advocacies is religious freedom talaga, I ask request from depart- the certain government departments clarifying their stand. Pero in reality, alam ko naman po talaga yung maging sagot nila kasi it's in the constitution eh. But just to make things clearer po mm-hmm. talaga, I go to different government like sa DepEd, sa CHED, and mm-hmm. etc. Kung saan po may concern na lumalapit sa akin. Mm-hmm. Now, are Filipinos more tolerant of the beliefs of others? Yung kumpansin nyo po, actually yung Filipino po, we are very into religion eh. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, tolerant. Yeah, are we more tolerant uh, compared to, like for example, the United States of America or mm-hmm. our other counterparts from all over the world? So, yung Filipino po, yung, yung problem po kasi, uh, basta sa akin lang po talaga yung stand ko always is, always respect the belief mm-hmm. of others. Do not impose your faith upon others. Mm-hmm. Kasi, perfect example, ako po, I will be citing my belief because I'm a Christian, Seventh-day Adventist Christian to be specific. When Jesus Christ was in this earth, He did not impose His faith on others. Diba? He did not plan to establish Christianity. He was here with Jewish traditions, and he followed that belief. After he died, doon lang na-establish yung Christianity. Kung si Jesus nga mismo, he respected beliefs of others, how much more tayo, mere Christians who are his followers, na why do we impose our faith on others na tingin natin mas all-knowing tayo? Dapat hindi. In other words, eh, respect pa rin. Respect It all boils rin. down to respect, uh, respecting the other person. Yes. Let's go on a lighter mode now. So, Congressman, eh, you're still young Mm-mm. and you have many more years, you know, uh, ahead of you. How do you de-stress yourself? De-stress? Mm-hmm. So, Siyempre, napaka-stressful ng <laughs> life. 
So of course, yung work ko po kasi, I, it, it might sound parang corny eh, pero I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. When I go to different places, in, every time I get invited for events, I try to make the most of it. I get to know the people behind the, the organizers, yung mga nag-invite po sa akin. Kinikilala ko po yung mga, yung mga participants. So parang I do not consider it, although it's work taxing sa body, pero mentally, mm -hmm. medyo rewarding kasi mm -hmm. Basta, ano po, a matter of perspectives, mm -hmm. do not look at it as work and you will enjoy what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And although I did not answer the question, so what do I do to de-stress? Of course, first, I spend time with my lovely wife mm -hmm. who is there mm -hmm. watching us. And I, I walk our three dogs. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, I also play basketball every now and then with my colleagues, tapos my mga neighbors. And I play video games then every mm -hmm. now and then. Mm -hmm. Yun po yung mga techniques ko lang to avoid stress. Okay. Now, sa mga kawatan, let's talk about the young people because you're also young yourself. No, We are all young. Okay? Kami din young at heart kami. <laughs> yes. Not maybe on age. No? Age is just a uh, uh, It's po. just number. All yeah. right. And it's only in the mind. Eh. So, for young people po, do you think, uh, Congressman, uh, what would be your guiding tips for them? so that they would be able to achieve kung ano yung sinet nilang goal for their lives. Guiding tips for them. So, first rule, of course, follow your parents. Mm -hmm. Kasi whether you like it or not, your parents always know best for you. Tapos, minsan, when you are young, you do not understand what their plan is for you. Pero later on, you will understand the bigger picture na yung plano po nila. So, first step, follow your parents. And second, follow your heart yung mm -hmm. sa children. Kasi, uh, minsan kasi napipilitan tayo to do things we do not want but but syempre you have to enjoy it tapos and third dapat first pala to trust God also mm -hmm. kasi like ako yung personal story ko po no matter what you plan for yourself if that's not God's plan for you it's still going to change mm -hmm. so you should embrace that fact also kasi baka ma-disappoint sila kung hindi ma-achieve yung goals nila eh. mm -hmm. so trust in God, trust in your parents, and follow their heart. Okay, so dun tayo sa mga kabataan. Sunod naman po eh, ano kayang pwede pang gawin ng government sa tingin niyo po? Kayo, you are part of the government now. Ano po kayang meron pang pwedeng gawin ng government in order to improve the plight at para umangat ang buhay ng bawat Pilipino? So, first, of course, dapat ma-maximize talaga yung uh, resources of the government. Kasi, what happens po kasi talaga, now that I am exposed, especially yung, yung, yung work po kasi namin in Congress, we have the power of the purse. We allocate the funding of different government departments and yung agencies. Tapos yung nakita ko po kasi nangyayari talaga, biggest issue is, hindi po na utilize lagi yung funding on a yearly basis. Tapos the next year, they ask for a bigger funding. So I do not understand why they keep asking. Hindi nga nila nagamit yung previous year. So sana mag mag uh, increase ng effort yung government para talagang ma-utilize yung resources kasi we have a lot of resources as a country pero underutilized lang po talaga mm -hmm. and i am happy now kasi yung administration is very active under the Duterte administration for example yung DPWH as we can see talagang hinahabol yung infrastructure programs kasi we are behind i think by like 30 or 50 years infrastructure wise mm -hmm. so it's nice to see yung 24/7 implementation nila basta we should just parang as, as a public servant, as a government employee, we should not forget our oath of office and why we are here. Yun po talaga dapat. No, yun po ang dapat nating marinig sa bawat mamamayan, no? Na tumakbo at uh, umupo dito para naman sila ay makapagsilbi sa kanilang kapwa, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that's the calling that you have and a vocation that you would like to, to serve. Thank you so much, Congressman, for your time. What is now your message of hope to our viewers? Message of hope. So... First, of course, uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you also for listening to what I've said. Hopefully, may natutunan kayo kahit papano. And God bless the God bless you and God bless the Republic of the Philippines. Yes, po. dear viewers, heto po tandaan natin. God who gave life also gave us the freedom of choice. So it is our choice whether we would be able to help our country, whether we will, uh, you know, try to practice the religious freedom that is given to us. Because remember, in Corinthians three seventeen, ang sabi po don is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is always freedom. Mabuhay po tayong lahat at magandang araw po.
If you have been blessed by this program, share hope and help us continue to bring hope everywhere. Send your donations to South Philippine Union Conference through any of the bank details shown here. Hope Channel, sharing love, changing lives. are from Mountain View College and we have the utilities of a little town for more than your basic needs we have the heart for outreach MVC can bring out your compassion and literally exercise it through the Sulad Student Missionary Program, among many other outreach activities. And when you need to take a break, MVC can also feel like a resort. So you will be refreshed. We have serene and scenic landscapes. To a rich, faith-filled history. We have a campus that's big enough to build your dreams and future on. Come and build your future with us. Join the around 2,000 students from all over the world, 17 countries, who have come and build their future with us. Here, we have activities to develop your emotional, social, physical, and spiritual aspects of your life. Experience the best in Christian education. Come and build your future with us at Mountain View College, Valencia City, Bukidnon, Philippines. Come and build your future with Mountain View College. Sometimes. <laughs> Why not? Mm. Yes. My brother. My mom. And of course, my dad. The policeman. Boss. My teachers. My grandpa. When I am threatened. When he stares at me. When I hear his whistle. <laughs> when they raise their voice. When they call me by my full name. Whenever he calls me like this. Hey, come on, bro. Because they're the law. He's older than me. Um, my grave would be at stake. They're my parents. Since I'm younger than him, I'll be fired if I don't. <laughs> you know. Obedience is more than a state of being obedient. It is our willful practice of obedience. Conscious decision to obey policemen and our teachers. It means submission to the rules, which are meant to keep us safe. Likewise, obedience is a manifestation of love. I respect I my parents. I love my mom. I love my dad. Older brother. Besides, it says we obey our grandparents, our older brother, our people of authority, our boss, our parents, and the Lord. For this is right. Ado na ka ba'y buot masayran sa kinabuhi? Ado na ba'y kagawasan sa sala o kasakit? May paglaong pa ba ang mga minatay? Unsa ba'y padulngan sa kalibutan? Mga higala, ipangutan na kay pastor. Ipadala ang imong mga pangutana o tubago ni pastor gamit ang Biblia. Pangutana pastor, 
Usa ka serbisyo, gidalit ka ninyo, gikan sa Hope Channel. I thrive amidst the noise of productivity. I shine through the haze of prosperity. I stand tall amongst the throng of opportunity. I tell immortal stories of humble men and inspiring women. I am clad with acceptance, forgiveness, and trust. I am the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am truly an escape from the taunting toy. I am in a country born of color and sound. I am a spectrum of diversity and community. My smile radiates compassion. My touch eases pain. My speech sparks faith. I exist in a world of perfections and frailties. of abandon and limitation. I seek to spread hope. I am the Seventh-day Adventist Church. My heart beats for my people. I know 30 different words for friendship. And show it in 300 different ways. I rise through the rubble of devastation. Through the chains of fear. I speak for the unheard. Seventh-day Adventist Church. Against the backdrop of my turbulent past, my outer
outstretched arms convey a welcome. Within the embrace of my homes, truth is echoed in a song. Grace is displayed in acceptance. A life is changed. My heart is sin in giving. In caring. In reaching. I am the Seventh-day Adventist Church. My people make me beautiful. My history reveals my strength. Adversity taught me the power of forgiveness. I have found my freedom. My heart is open. My hands reach out. I am the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are people, and we love to get connected. We connect as families because of birth. We connect as friends because we click. And we connect as communities because we care. Seventh-day Adventists are people who connect in communities called congregations, which in turn connect to form conferences, who connect together to form unions, divisions, and the general conference. Why do we connect? It starts with a connection to the Creator who invites us on a spiritual journey. When we journey together, we can help each other along the way. This journey is a journey of a lifetime. And as we learn and grow, life becomes filled with meaning and purpose. Our greatest joy is in helping others along the way. Wherever you are on your journey, we believe that we have something to offer that can make your life more whole. So the next time you see a Seventh-day Adventist, remember, you're not looking at someone who stands alone. They are connected to a world church that has 18 million members gathered in 13 divisions comprised of 122 unions formed by 600 conferences serving in 140,000 congregations in 208 countries who worship in 924 languages, and they all want to connect with you. My streets burst with life. Smiles paint my people's faces. Laughter follows children at play. My art displays who I am. Thank you.
the language of courage. I am here. I serve. I reach. I love. I am the Seventh-day Adventist Church.